good day. I'd like to take you today through some features uh, and background to the Intrepid Wormy tool, our multi-scale edge detection tool. Uh, this was first uh, developed in the early 2003-2004 and it's had a continuous uh, evolution uh, of features and functions and since that time. In introducing the tool, uh, it's designed to work mostly with potential field data, the gravity and magnetic field, and the collection of potential field data of course is uh, an order of magnitude uh, less expensive than some of the other geophysical techniques and of course uh, these days uh, it can be managed from an aircraft, as often is, and so uh, it can be rapidly uh, used for regional reconnaissance, uh, uh, geophysical surveying with an aid to improving the geological map uh, and particularly when there's uh, sand and un undercover. Geological discontinuities in um, potential field data show up uh, such as faults and contacts and intrusives show up as sharp contrasts in the potential field. Uh, the depth location and shape of the source is reflected in the potential field uh, but uh, it's still subject due to ambiguity to many uh, different sources having uh, similar uh, signal uh, characteristics. So therefore uh, additional geological information is needed to interpret the potential field data uh, but it's a great start. Worm analysis. So Strong gradients and edges in potential field data are known as worms because of their wriggly shape. Well, we use these worms to help locate and infer buried geological structures. This process can be called worm analysis. This has been done traditionally for many years by geoscientists. Uh, it requires uh, specific training and lots of experience uh, often with, uh, if you have some knowledge of the geology of the area and you see a worm map, uh, you can rapidly figure out what features are showing up and you can get continuity where you can't see them in the field. So the, wor the art of worm analysis is thus, thus partly subjective and it can be uh, time consuming. One of the most important aspects of the, uh, of the technology uh, that, is, that has evolved is to upward continue the measured potential field a, ser uh, a series of times. So sources close to the surface uh, uh, or outcrops uh, generally show up in potential fields as short wavelength anomalies whereas sources that are buried deep underground tend to have long wavelength features in the potential field. The upward continuation transforms the measured uh, signal uh, as though it had been measured uh, uh, far above the surface of the earth. So therefore it attenuates short wavelengths in the single stronger than long wavelengths. Thus upward continuation highlights deeper sources that might otherwise be hidden by the shallower sources. Here is an example from Northwest Shelf of Australia. It's the total magnetic intensity map uh, collected a few years ago and uh, just with a colour stretch with a gradient enhancement uh, and you can see it's very busy and all the uh, <coughs> shallow features, you've got a dike swarm coming across from the uh, strong strong dike type features coming across from the northeast uh, corner uh, down to the southwest and as you move offshore uh, suddenly the wavelength uh, becomes a lot broader and stronger as you as water starts to come across the uh, uh, cover some of the signal there and you get into deeper water so this is uh, shows many of the features I've just been talking about if you up and continue that uh, just 500 meters so that it simulates an aeroplane flying a survey a magnetic survey an extra 500 meters higher uh, immediately a lot of the shorter wavelength starts to attenuate uh, and some of the intermediate wavelengths start to uh, become more uh, apparent and more obvious and you get different structure. So this is reflecting 
getting as we're going uh, at deeper sources as we said before and then really going for it upward continuing 11 kilometers all of the surface uh, expression has disappeared and you're seeing deeper structures perhaps down more towards the crust um, and to the bottom of the crust uh, at about uh, um, at least five to uh, eight kilometers deep and their uh, magnetic sources so that's the principle of upward continuation just a couple of snapshots to show you now we move on to the multi-scale edge detection how do we pick up the edges of these features what is an edge an edge is a simple enough idea uh, but uh, <clears throat> how do you pick them up and try and automate the uh, the finding of these edges in a digital data set now we're working in grids uh, so because of the noise in the signal we might be finding it hard to track an edge so we have to for our purposes uh, we define an edge to be the uh, maximum or, or minimum of a total horizontal derivative of a potential field um, so we take the measured magnetics or gravity and we differentiate in both the x and y direction and take the square root of the sum of the squares to come up with what we call the total horizontal derivative of the field and then the maximum of this quantity uh, generally f defines the edges very well so we're looking for the spots where the potential very potential field very strongest in this gradient so on the left hand side here you see that the reduced to the pole magnetics uh, with some uh, edge maps uh, where the aim is to try and pick out these dike features both both sides and you've got the question of which dike uh, crosses which and does that show up in the in the way the edge has been picked it's quite a tricky problem so why do we call this whole process multi-scale well in order to select shallow as well as deep sources, edge detection is performed on different upward continuation levels. Edge detection at the lower uh, uh, will we'll show the short worms corresponding to shallow sources, and edge detection at higher upward continuation will result in uh, longer worms, but that also they also correspond to uh, deeper sources. So we we're uh, transforming our data as a using different scales. Another way this is sometimes represented, uh, this comes from some of the original um, uh, reports that were produced by CSIRO and ourselves uh, back in 2004, um, where you're showing the original signal at the bottom with the anomaly, two, two, two significant uh, transitions here and here, and then as we upward continue that signal once, twice and three times to different heights. Uh, the actual anomaly shape changes and the, the maximum move out uh, from the original center line. And that's sort of like just on a, uh, a fault contact and here we've got more of a, a 3D body uh, with an anomaly over the top like a plug. And you get this characteristic uh, broadening of the uh, of uh, where the high point in the signal is another way of uh, showing this same sort of feature but rather than in player in a in a sectional view you move to more of a three-dimensional uh, <coughs> investigation of some of these effects so on the left hand side we have variations on uh, uh, on cylinders and cones and, and uh, truncated cones here for like a volcano and then above that is a simulated uh, uh, multi-scale response above this feature there so they're 3D shapes and then if you go to the uh, just like more like a dike you have a vertical a dike a 60 degree dipping dike and a 30 degree uh, uh, dipping dike uh, you get these uh, as you upward continue you get these um, two surfaces one for either side of the dike and when the feature is directly um, 
you know, when it's 90 degrees, you get symmetry, but as you, as the dip comes in, the takeoff uh, angle as you upward continue varies quite a lot. Uh, until recently, this, uh, while this was known, it, this, uh, this physics has not been exploited, but uh, recently Intrepid has uh, characterised this uh, and done the studies to work out what the dip, uh, to try and work out what the dip is based on the physics you're seeing here. So <clears throat> also another subject very close to the heart of Intrepid is gradiometry and worms are based on the uh, uh, on taking vertical gravity, measured vertical gravity and transforming it to the gradients or alternatively if you actually measure those gradients uh, as you as you do with a uh, Falcon system or the Lockheed Martin uh, system as supplied by Bell or Arc X, uh, the, the, uh, the measured gradients, the GZX and the GZY, uh, are actually the ones that you use to calculate the total horizontal gradient from. So measured gradients always perform much better than calculated ones uh, in our experience. But just to recap, uh, you can use uh, this multi-scale edge detection methodology works on measured TMI, vertical gravity, or if you're lucky enough to have a gradiometer survey, you can use those directly. The release of uh, uh, this Wormy tool with full formal support for uh, gravity gradiometry, it's in our uh, unreleased future branch. Uh, it's our version 6 Intrepid capability which is uh, ready to go. The main reason it's been held back is because of the uh, uh, attempting to, uh, well not only attempting, we've discovered a new algorithm for dip calculations uh, which we'll be shipping with the new version. So the horizontal derivative of gravity, in this case upward continued 100 metres, uh, looks like this. You can start to see uh, strong edge type uh, features starting to often this swirling circular pattern starts to come in as, you, as, you, as you're uh, going around the bounding edge of a, of a feature and the edge picking is, uh, that the worming does uh, comes along and at the yellow one is for the shallower levels and the red one is for the higher levels. If we uh, if we then uh, go up two kilometres, the uh, this total horizontal derivative uh, simplifies a lot, and only the strong features uh, are then used. Uh, uh, the maxima from that particular graph is used to pick out the red that you see in this uh, in this interpretation. So uh, this tool. Uh, when it was originally conceived, uh, first thing it does is pick out the points uh, on the, the grid of the maxima, local maxima and captures that into a points database and it captures the amplitude, the strike, the continuation height um, and, and uh, other things. We then take those points and we uh, join the points together looking for near neighbours and looking for continuity between uh, uh, tracking the, how the worm is developing and we call uh, we put these uh, into a points uh, well it's actually a line database uh, from the points and we can preserve the amplitude and continuation height we then have a look at that uh, series of lines and look for linears linearity of, of that and then uh, the aim is to try and reduce the uh, the complexity of that database down to just starting and end uh, positions and length and amplitude uh, at the various heights of the mo more linear features. At the same time as that we also uh, have historically have uh, produced a TIFF image uh, or a, and also a regular geophysical grid uh, that uh, captures all these amplitudes as they get added together during the upward continuation process. And this image itself is uh, quite a good, uh, has historically been quite uh, used, used a lot uh, for interpretation. So an example of that uh, follows. 
there it is there and it's just like a black and white with the white intensity the more intense lines being the showing the support in this interest uh, in this particular uh, uh, example uh, you can see here that the uh, well I was not explain that the all of the worms seem to be lying on top of each other therefore it's fairly vertical feature as you swerve turn around that corner you're getting some sort of separation at the different heights which indicates a dip so the body is dipping now in recent times uh, in the last couple of years there's been a lot of pressure to uh, formalize and try and get more information out of the gravity uh, data sets and magnetic and radiometer data sets that are increasingly being flown and the, the aim is to uh, enable uh, uh, this uh, geological information which seems to be there to uh, somehow formalize it and automate its extraction to give an interpreter a chance to uh, uh, be able to get a flying start at making his own model. So in, uh, in this version of, G of Intrepid version 5 the worm e tool has now been extended to include uh, uh, <coughs> uh, an, a geomodeler interface where you're now asked to also not only supply your potential field data but also a digital terrain model and a drape surface and from that uh, we then can register exactly where the, each of the worm features are and we've extended the uh, technology to include the possibility of calculating a dip uh, for uh, in this current release just the vertical component of gravity in the next release it will be for the full tensor gradiometry data as well so we generate ASCII data files for contacts dips and features and then the modeler has access to this information and his job is to work out are these features a dike a fault intrusive or a sill or whatever. So enough of the talk uh, or, or of the, the theory, we now move into a, uh, a demonstration of Wormy in action. Yes, yeah, so we go pick out a uh, magnetic grid from South Australia. Uh, with, uh, we're just showing the project manager. We picked out a, a grid. You can see the magnetic uh, uh, map of us uh, there with lots of features we go to the interpretation option and we pick the multi-scale edge detection uh, option and that'll start to fire up the tool and multi-scale edge detection and it preloads the grid that you've chosen and the first band the first job is to decide where you're going to store output from this uh, analysis so create a, a temporary area with some sort of system to it so you can uh, then check so you've created the output uh, move to the next panel in the wizard and this is probably the busiest one how many levels of upward continuation defaults to 20 there and uh, you, you can see if we cut it back to say 7 or 8 uh, one kilometer up to nine kilometers and if you can change the geometric factor which sort of spreads out the continuation levels it defaults to 1.4 and we go to about 15 that's more than enough uh, it's quite quick so it's not much penalty to doing this for scalar data um, <clears throat> we now have a look at uh, uh, some of the specific uh, settings for magnetics you can see we've got gravity and full tensor gradiometry there because it's magnetics you can get the opportunity to reduce the data to the pole uh, and do other transformations let's assume we're going to simulate that you, know, you get the option of specifying the field locally over this grid or calculating it based on the date and the latitude and longitude and elevation of the survey aircraft of course in this case the data is actually already reduced to the pole so don't do it again and we're not going to convert it to pseudo gravity or vertical derivative because we're not looking for near feature near, near surface features move to the next one which is the depth uh, the uh, point picking and then the following one is joining those points to form the worms in the first place don't search more 
two grid cells away and then a worm can't be formed unless there's at least a continuity of three points and uh, we then have an analysis of the, the worms that you're going to create looking for linears and uh, the maximum deviation of a of a worm can be uh, eight kilometers from a the, the li straight line joining end to end and it must be at least 15 long and then we have lots of options for uh, getting the output in GIS type uh, format uh, compatible files, shape files and tab files etc VRML and they're all being ticked on just for the purposes of illustration it's unlikely you're going to want them all we push the button and go through the FFT stages we're going to jump forward a little bit here uh, it's actually quite quick but we don't need to watch it do all that FFT work and now we're doing all those exports as requested and uh, it's done there there it is all finished and uh, <coughs> we then uh, ship shoot through to have a look at the output directories the shape files the tab files the ASCII files are there and some of the GoCAD files the <coughs> Intrepid database worms is being interrogated there in the JF manager project manager view you can see the fields we're going to open up the display 3d explorer and have a look at this in 3d uh, just a quick look at the output uh, the first view is just a tabular view a table view and we open up the uh, uh, under the map window we have a look at that in plan view to start with the um, <coughs> and then uh, we'll, we'll spin that into 3d so it just uh, loads the uh, tab data into the graphics window and there it is and we open up the go to full screen and open up the uh, rotate that around and then we're going to put the continuation height at this stage as the Z direction Z dimension and uh, as it redraws you'll see it jump to the, the 3D view and they're spread out a little bit as we, we did go up we continue 11 kilometers we're going to reduce the vertical scale so you can see the, the layers there and the the upper features are stronger sort of usually thought to represent the deeper continuous uh, uh, crustal features and there it is so we've gone from a uh, a plain aeromagnetic uh, data set uh, to a uh, quite uh, detailed uh, extraction not only of the near surface features but the deeper ones we're now going to uh, <coughs> have a look at the same information this time in the traditional X11 visualization tool. So we put the, uh, the, the uh, source grid underneath, go to full screen, and then bringing the same worms information uh, by loading the line data set, picking out the, in the directory the Intrepid Worms database and then overlaying those so using the continuation height for the signal uh, in white on top of the the uh, the uh, color stretched uh, magnetics and then you start to see uh, the worms just uh, being uh, stroked in on top of the main features and you can see it uh, covers the uh, picks the edges up of each of those issues very well we color improved to a histogram stretch on the magnetics and just re uh, revisit that and that's your standard out of the box uh, product without any once too many uh, trimmings having, once you've uh, having shown you the wormy tool in action if you wish to uh, uh, get access to this technology to try it uh, just contact the office uh, Intrepid is a one-stop shop and we uh, are passionate about uh, providing tools for geologists and geophysicists to help them interpret, uh, uh, get more value out of the, uh, the data that you uh, have available for you to help you unravel the uh, hidden geology beneath the ground. You can get access to the tools uh, through an evaluation license 
and we have a procedure there. Of course, uh, Intrepid comes with uh, a uh, uh, it's now a 15-year history of uh, documenting and creating training materials and examples, uh, and we freely make this available for you online and when you get an example it doesn't just include uh, the wormy tool thank you